Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be hosting today's webinar titled Managing Your Oral Care. I am very pleased to be joined by our expert speaker, Ruth Glover. Ruth, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you, Zabar? I'm doing very well, thank you. It's an absolute pleasure having you on. Uh, a little bit of information about Ruth is uh, that uh, she's a qualified dental technician from King's College Dental Hospital. Um, Ruth currently divides her time between roles in private practice in teaching dental hygiene and therapy as a tutor at King's College Hospital and as deputy lead of the Masters uh, Dental Hygiene Distance Learning Program at UCL Eastman Dental Institute. Ruth's focus uh, with patients is to provide support and personalized periodontal and preventative oral health care. Her focus with dental professionals is helping them to develop their full potential. So we're in great hands today. Um, this webinar will be split into two parts as always. One will be, uh, part one will be Ruth's presentation. And then this will be followed by a Q&A, uh, which will give you the opportunity to send in your questions live and interactive for me to put forward to Ruth. This presentation will include uh, oral health, oral disease, the importance of oral health, risk factors and indicators and other important topic areas. Uh, if you are finding these webinars to be very helpful and you'd like to support future webinars, you can do so by making a donation of five pounds. You can do so by texting SRUK webinar to 70450. Text costs five pound plus one standard rate message. I will update the, checks, the chat section very shortly so you can see uh, that information. Um, and now I'm very happy to hand over to Ruth. Well, Ruth, thank you. I'll begin to share your screen. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you very much for those very kind words. I'm just going to get my screen up and um, then. Um, Just um, go, sorry. That's perfect, Ruth, you're now sharing. Yeah, can you just take me off the screen, Zabair, and then I, I'll um, share, that'd be lovely. Thank you. Thanks for everybody who's listening. That's um, absolutely wonderful to um, have you join us today. So the topic um, for today is um, managing your oral care. And um, I think it's uh, something that um, hopefully all of you who are listening um, uh, think is important. And I hope that we'll be able to um, find some little tips and helps that might um, help you with your oral care. So all of you will know that chronic diseases such as arthritis and heart disease and diabetes have an association with dental diseases. And um, those of you who have a weakened immune system or who use um, steroids or um, have a condition like Sjogren's or osteoporosis might also have an increased risk of having poor oral health. The, the really good news is that a significant amount of oral disease is preventable. And I hope to share some insights and practical tips to help you better manage your own oral care. Um, this is what we'll be covering today. So the question is, how do we manage our oral care? So we're gonna look at gums first. Um, the main um, factor that causes gum disease and also tooth decay is a plaque and it's a sticky substance made from remnants of food and particles um, that mix with your saliva in your mouth and if you don't brush properly it begins to form and build up on your teeth and this is problematic because plaque contains bacteria and they multiply and produce waste products which are harmful to the teeth and to the gums. And here we have a lovely study by Trombelli who um, got lots of patients to uh, not brush. And here was the baseline um, where the teeth and the gums look quite healthy. But at um, uh, seven days, you can start to see that there's a little bit of inflammation and there's less stippling. 
At 14 days, you can really see the buildup of plaque around this tooth. And also there's inflammation and it's starting to look red. And then we go to day 21 and there's a lot of plaque building up um, around and a lot more swelling and redness. So the intensity of the clinical signs and the symptoms will vary with each individual um, from one to another. Uh, the good thing is that um, if you have only not brushed for a short period of time, it just generally affects the gums and it's totally reversible um, with good brushing. And this is called gingivitis. And here you can see that good brushing can revert back to um, health. So, um, but if you don't remove the plaque really well on a regular basis, then what starts to happen is that the um, infection starts to influence the bone that underlies um, the gum. And once that happens, it's uh, irreversible. Um, you can't put back the bone. But the good thing is that with good plaque control, you can prevent further destruction. But this bone destruction is called periodontitis. So what we want is balance towards resisting gum disease so that there's no, so that gum disease isn't winning. And if the risk factors are great, like poor oral hygiene, or if you smoke, or if you have unstable diabetes, or you have reduced saliva flow, or you have a reduced immune response to um, inflammation, or if you're stressed, then these are risk factors which will tip the balance towards having gum diseases of some sort. So what we want to do is try and resist that so that we don't end up with gum disease. So if we look at the other disease, the main uh, disease of teeth, um, you can see here a picture of complete health. There's absolutely looks um, fantastic, but as we go across, you can see that a little bit more um, uh, of a lesion and then it becomes even more and then we get a hole. Obviously the hole is irreversible. Um, so we want to try and prevent this from happening. And the, at this stage it's completely preventable. The other process that affects teeth is uh, erosion. And it's not a disease, it's a process, it's um, irreversible. And it's uh, as a result of repeated exposure from acids um, in the oral environment. And so if you have, for instance, acid reflux, you might be in a higher risk of um, tooth surface loss. So tooth decay, um, there are four factors which need to be um, present to initiate um, dental decay or uh, caries. You need to have a tooth surface, you need to have sugar in um, any form lots of times during the day. You need to have plaque bacteria and it needs to be over a period of time. Now the good thing is that if you remove any one of those items, um, so take away sugar, take away um, bacteria, plaque, then the process of tooth decay um, can't go ahead. It won't take place. So we can actually prevent by being really good with our plaque control and our sugar um, intake. So again, with um, healthy teeth, what we want to try and do is uh, reduce the risks and increase the resistance. So Increasing the resistance, we only want to have three attacks of sugar per day on our teeth, that's at meal times. We want to use fluoride, we want to have good oral hygiene, we need to have good saliva. So if you have, have a reduced saliva flow, then we need to think about substitutes. And if you have acid reflux, then we need to think about how you can minimize those attacks on your teeth. And we need to, um, have regular dental visits as well, which will help to prevent and pick up things early. So in managing our oral care, brushing is really important because we know that plaque is the main enemy of gum disease and tooth decay. Um, so removing the plaque is 
number one important. So one of the recommendations is to brush twice a day and um, brushing first thing in the morning when you wake up and then making sure that you brush last thing at night. Um, use the best equipment that you can, that makes life easy for you, like a soft brush with a small head that works in your hands, in your mouth, so that you can reach every part of your mouth, each tooth, so that you're really getting the plaque off. And it's worth considering electric toothbrush because it helps to reduce gum disease, um, such as gingivitis. And um, they also, these devices also help because they do some of the work for you. It's vibrating, it's actually um, uh, manually um, take, taking some of the um, plaque off for you without you having to do too much movement. The other thing is to keep your equipment clean and also to replace it regularly. So one of the um, other things is that we need to use the best possible medicament to actually help strengthen our teeth. And if you use a, a toothpaste that doesn't contain fluoride, then you're going to be more at risk. So a toothpaste that contains 1,450 um, parts per million um, is, is important. And the other thing to do is to spit, not rinse, so that you keep the fluoride ions around your teeth for a little bit longer, helping to strengthen the teeth. It's also um, worth uh, using a fluoride rinse. Um, Fluoride works best if you use it little and often. So um, using alcohol free so that it doesn't dry your mouth and also using um, a mouth rinse at a different time to when you actually brush because you, if you spit the toothpaste and then you then use a mouthwash, you're sort of almost uh, rinsing away some of the effect from the toothpaste. Um, so using um, mouthwash at a different time, say maybe at lunchtime when you don't have a toothbrush handy, will just up the number of uh, times that you have fluoride in your mouth and will help to um, strengthen your teeth. So one of the things that um, in terms of brushing is that um, the way we hold our toothbrush can make quite a big difference. Um, there are two types of hold that you can um, have for your toothbrush. So you have a think about how you hold your brush. One might be a grip over the top. And then the other one is um, you could hold your brush like a pen, which is called a pen grip. Now the advantage of the um, just over the top grip is that you just have wrist movement that enables you to get the brush head into the right place. But if you use a pen grip, you have some flexibility with your fingers and your wrist. So it might make it a little bit easier for you to get your brush into the right place. Um, also, it might be useful to have a special grip, customized made to help you if you're having difficulty holding um, your toothbrush. Um, you just use some lab putty, um, a dental technician or your dentist might be able to help you with this. Um, but it can make brushing a little bit easier for you. So when we talk about managing your um, uh, brushing, what do we actually mean by that? So it's important that you aim the brush towards where the gum and the tooth meet, just there, all right? And what I always suggest to patients is that you start in the most difficult part of your mouth to, to reach um, first. So usually the inside is quite tricky. And you can see that the brush head is placed so that the bristles are actually at almost a 45 degree to the tooth surface that you're brushing. So start at the back, and work round each tooth. And then like a little horseshoe, go round each tooth inside and then come around the outside and then do the biting surface. And for, then, for the top teeth, you're gonna do exactly the same. It's really important that you manage to cover the whole surface. So if we look down on this tooth and you're using say an electric toothbrush, you need to be able to roll the brush around and you can see the change in angle here. 
If you don't do that, what will happen, or if you move your brush across too quickly, you'll miss bits and you'll leave plaque. So it's really important that you develop a really good technique. Now, one of the things that um, makes life very difficult to get to the right place is the size of your brush. So it's worth thinking about how long your brush is, how deep it is, because if you've got very tight skin or you've got a small opening, then having a very large brush is gonna make life very difficult to get into the right areas. So the other thing to think about is the possibility of using a single tufted brush. And there are lots of little brushes like this with different angles and different ends, which might help you to get round each tooth to do a better job. This one is a useful brush because it's got a slightly wider um, bristles. And again, it's got this extra bend, so it reaches back and gets to difficult areas. So have a look around, find different brushes and try them out. It's really worthwhile doing that. And the other brush that's really useful is a Dr. Barman's and it comes in two sizes, an adult and a child size. I would always recommend the child size because the adult one is very large, but it does some of the work for you. It already angles the brush heads to the right position and it also brushes the top surface all in one go. Now, when you're brushing, you brush the inside and the outside of your teeth and the, and the biting surface, but you don't really get in between with the brush, normal brush. So what does that mean? It means about 50% of your mouth will not be clean because in between each tooth hasn't been cleaned properly. So it's really important to actually clean between your teeth. And there are a couple of ways that you can do that. Brushes are really good if you have slightly larger spaces. And the way to use a brush is to find a brush that fits snugly in between the tooth that you're cleaning. And you then pop it through five or six times and the bristles are gonna clean just down here underneath the area where the teeth contact and really clean at the gum level. Now there are lots of different types of uh, uh, brushes that go in between. They there are some with long handles, some with right handle um, to the brush. The these are teepees, which you might have seen, but there are lots and lots of varieties. It's a question of finding the right one and the right size for each scalp. If your teeth are very close together, it might not be possible to get a little brush through. So um, you might find that flossing um, is the only thing that you can get through between your teeth. But it's really important, like I said, to try and get something working between your teeth to clean in between. Otherwise, you're going to be sitting there with quite a lot of plaque. So flossing can be quite a challenge, but um, it's like everything else. If you practice, you can. Um, maybe achieve uh, a, a good result with it. So take a long enough piece of floss, about 18 um, inches, and then wrap it around your um, uh, middle finger and then wrap it around the other finger. What you want to end up with is not too big a, a piece of floss being held between your thumbs and your, um, your, your other finger. You then want to slide it up between the, the teeth that you're um, uh, cleaning and then slide it until you get resistance. And you're going to pull it in a little C shape around the tooth that you're cleaning. And you're going to rub it up and down five or six times. And then you're going to take this across, form a C shape on this tooth and do exactly the same until you meet resistance. It's not an in and out, it's up and down the tooth. And then once you've finished, you come out and then you go to the next space. Now, for some of you, it won't be um, easy to floss using floss tape like that or, or floss. So you might look at using flossettes. And these can be, they come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Again, it's a question of finding the right one for you. Um, and uh, using the... Um, floss in the same way. So you um, gently 
pop it through the space and um, then you slide it up, pulling it towards one, two surface, slide it up until you get resistance and then up and down and a few times and then you push it across to the next tooth and up and down and then you come out between those that space and you go to the next one. There are lots of different types of floss. There's um, floss with um, that, that's quite um, sturdy or there's tape or they have um, PTF tape. So it's a question of finding the right one that works for you so it doesn't shred and um, it makes life easy for you. Now, Managing your oral care isn't just about cleaning your gums and your teeth because one of the things that um, your tongue actually harbors a lot of bacteria in your mouth. So it's really important to give your tongue a really good clean every day. So you can do this with either a brush, just stick your tongue out and brush it, or you can use a special um, uh, tongue scraper, which is plastic that you just bring um, across your tongue and down several times. I would recommend that you try, if you're using some disclosing tablets, these are amazing because they show and highlight new plaque and old, and it gives you an idea of where you might be missing or where you need to concentrate a little bit more if you're doing a good, good job in most places. So for instance, here in this picture, this tooth looks pretty clean but you can see there's a little bit of new plaque just starting here and the toothbrush hasn't got to that area so here we might need to use either an in-between brush in between the teeth or we might need to use floss um, just to get that surface really nice and clean. I would encourage you also to um, think about maybe um, using a very high magnification mirror so that you can get up close and personal with your teeth and see how you're doing. Also, there's some research to show that if you um, take a video of yourself brushing, this helps you to learn how to brush a bit better because you might then see where you might be missing areas or where you can improve. So worth taking a selfie. Now, when we're talking about tooth decay, um, it's really important to think about the diet managing your diet. And one of the big things for teeth is to limit the sugary drinks and food to just three times a day, that's meal times. And then in between having what we call safe snacks. So what do I mean by safe snacks? Things like cheese or hummus and carrots or um, cucumber or toast with marmite or breadsticks. Those are things that are safe for your teeth. Um, when you have acid reflux, quite often the advice is that you have little snacks, little and often. So it's just being mindful that from the point of view of teeth, the in-between snacks need to be safe and not sugary. Again, um, brushing with fluoride um, and spitting don't rinse and making sure that you'll really be becoming a plaque athlete, getting that plaque off really well every day is gonna make a big difference to um, preventing gum disease and tooth decay. And also if you have dry mouth, then using some sort of salivary um, substitutes. If you have um, acid reflux, then obviously it needs to be treated. So go and see um, your uh, GP and um, you might need some medication like um, a protein pump inhibitor, uh, an antacid. But there are some things that you can do to help as well. So you can raise the head of, the, of your bed um, by six to eight inches by propping it up on some uh, planks. Um, being really mindful about your diet, um, using toothpaste with fluoride, and you might need to have some further investigations. So if you have um, really dry mouth, what happens is that you don't have enough saliva or spit to keep your mouth wet. Um, and this makes it really difficult um, to eat, swallow, taste, and even speak. So um, dry mouth can increase the chances of your uh, risk of having tooth decay. And also it can um, add to the risk of um, opportunistic um, infections such as fungal infections in your mouth. Um, but it's also useful to be aware that 
um, medications such as high blood pressure or for depression or bladder control disease can also um, cause dry mouth. So it might not just be as a result of your uh, scleroderma. Um, things that you can use to help manage, um, you can use uh, sugar-free gum. Uh, just be mindful that most sugar-free gum has xylitol in it and some people find that um, they uh, have a bad reaction to a lot of it. Limit your caffeine intake because caffeine actually um, makes your mouth much drier. Um, avoid using mouthwashes that contain alcohol because again they dry the mouth out. Um, if you smoke try and stop really that has quite a big effect even if you're chewing tobacco again try and stop and the other thing to do is to sip plain water make sure that you don't add anything to the water but just use plain water and um, you can obviously use over-the-counter library substitutes and you can use a, a, a mouthwash which is designated for a dry mouth so you might want to uh, try um, something like um, mouth keto or um, uh, Oasis um, moisturizing or biotin uh, dry um, mouth or bio extra. Um, these are all um, mouth rinses that can help um, coat and um, help with uh, dry mouth. Um, the other thing to do uh, to, to, to note is that if you suffer from um, uh, at po pollen, then antihistamines and decongestants, if um, you're taking those, they can actually add to your dry mouth. The other thing is very simple, try and breathe through your nose. And then at night, it might be worth um, having a humidifier in the room just to um, make the air moisture a little bit um, easier. Now, we know that plaque is the um, big thing that we need to try and um, remove from our teeth. Um, and saliva is really important for our health. So taking these steps to protect um, will help your, um, uh, improve, hopefully, your, your quality of life. So avoiding sugary or acidic drinks, um, particularly in between meals. Use a fluoride toothpaste, spit, don't rinse. Um, clean between your teeth each day. And you might find that if the balance is tipping towards decay, that a high fluoride toothpaste, which is a prescription only, um, might help, in which case you'll need to go to your dentist and get a prescription for that. You can get it from your GP as well. But the parts per million are two, 800 or 5,000 parts per million. So it's much higher um, level of fluoride, but that can be quite helpful as well to prevent um, tooth decay. The advice is that you should visit your dentist twice a year. That will help with prevent and pick things up quickly before they become a real problem. And in conclusion, I think it's worth just looking at SRUK website about oral aspects of scleroderma. Um, Long-term oral care is really, really important. So seeing your dentist every two, um, twice a, a year is really um, good. You should take an active role in the maintenance of good oral hygiene. And, and don't always assume that scleroderma is the cause of all mouth problems. Um, I'd just also say that if you do have a lump or an ulcer that um, doesn't go away within two weeks, you should really seek advice from your doctor and your dentist. Um, and it's really important to have a good working relationship with all your healthcare teams to lessen the risk and severity of all diseases. And so I would recommend um, your own, having your own dentist, but also possibly seeing a dental hygienist if you can on a regular basis to help you with your oral care. Thank you so much for listening to this and I'm really looking forward to answering and uh, your questions. Thank you very much, Ruth, for the very insightful presentation. I'll just try and get you to uh, share your video. I think a, notif a notification should be coming up. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Um, thank you for that very insightful presentation. I mean, I learned quite a lot myself, especially the correct technique for flossing, the up and down with the C shape. So. Uh,
I'm sure I'm sure everyone else has um, learned quite a bit about uh, about oral care. I would now like to ask everybody to hover over the Q and A section on Zoom, uh, and there you can add in your questions. We'll do our best to answer as many of the questions as we can. Um, so please do send in your questions there. Let's have a look and see what questions are coming in. We'll just give everybody a moment. So there's a question that's come in from Michael. And Michael says, I have uh, an extreme dry mouth and I'm diligent in my oral care. I use three different sizes of TEPE interdental brushes, implant floss, standard floss, and an, and an electric toothbrush. In addition, I see a dental hygienist twice a year and a dentist annually. Furthermore, I use salivice, uh, mouth spray, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, during the day and saliva inducing tablets at night. Despite all of this, I'm still having issues with tooth loss. Is there anything else I can do? And would a water pick be better than interdental brushes and floss or useful as an addition? I appreciate, I appreciate that's a very complex question. <laughs> Thank you for that question. Um, I must first of all congratulate you on um, using TPs, floss, and being so diligent because that takes a lot of work and it, it it's quite discouraging then to find that you still got tooth loss so there there are many reasons why you might have tooth loss and it's a question of trying to figure out um, what the main reason is so is it because you are getting tooth decay or is it because you're you have gum disease periodontal disease, which means the teeth are loose, or are your teeth, are they just under such a lot of load that they're cracking and then you're losing them that way? So it's really important to understand why. And obviously I, I'm, you're not under my care at the moment, so I can't specifically say, but let's just try and unpick that. So if it's tooth decay, it might be worth upping your fluoride intake. So getting a prescription for the 2800 or the 5000 from your dentist might help prevent tooth decay. Yeah, because you've got dry mouth, your protection from your saliva isn't there. So you need to compensate for that. And it sounds to me like you've been doing that with your um, oral hygiene. Um, but your oral hygiene needs to be really, really good. So I would suggest that you use some disclosing tablets to make sure that you um, are doing absolutely the best that you can possibly do. All right. And that you target any areas that you find um, and you might have a little bit of um, plaque left. If you have any bleeding, that's usually an indication that there's inflammation and something active going on. So it might be that you have periodontal disease. If you've got a deep pocket and bone loss, then it makes it much more difficult for you to keep everything clean. So it's important that you're, you, when you go and see the dentist that your um, gums don't have any pockets more than about four millimeters. Anything over four millimeters, then you're going to struggle to keep those areas clean, even if you're meticulous. And you might need to see the a dental hygienist a little bit more often. All right. Um, and then the other thing is just keeping hydrated and um, using your sprays, et cetera, as much as possible. But Diet is also the other thing. Just really look at your um, in-between snacks. Do you have um, tea with sugar? Uh, you know, really cut down the amount of sugar in between. So no fizzy drinks, no juices, um, just plain water, um, minimum amount. Use sweeteners instead of sugar. That sort of thing will help. So I don't know if that's sort of answered. It's in a roundabout way, but um, thank you for that question. Thank you very much for your detailed answer, Ruth. 
uh, we've also had a, another question coming, <clears throat> and they've asked for your thoughts on water flossing. Oh, yes, water picks and water flossing. So the evidence isn't strong. What, what's, what's very evident is that um, water picks will get rid of the big chunks of food. But unfortunately, it doesn't really, the water isn't um, strong enough to remove the plaque that builds up. So um, we'd still recommend brushing or flossing in between. Um, but they can be useful around implants, but you still need to brush, absolutely. Um, and the evidence to suggest that you can replace um, your in-between cleaning um, isn't there. Um, all the studies show that they aren't as effective. Thank you very much, Ruth. We've had a interesting question coming from Helen. Thank you for your question, Helen. Helen goes on to ask, sugar-free gum helps my dry mouth but affects my bowel yeah. is there anything else i could try that's really tricky because it's probably the xylitol if you're um having a using a lot of sugar free um and it it's one of the known side effects for some people so my only suggestion is lots of water um, stay really hydrated, lots of sips of water. And if you don't like the taste of water too much, use ice cold water or put ice cubes in the water that can help the taste as well. Um, and use a spray, um, lots of different sprays, um, lots of different mouthwashes that can help. Thank you very much, Ruth. Uh, we've had another question come in. Uh, someone asks, are there any specialists in the UK, NHS or private, that can help with this? But they then don't go on to refer to what this is. Uh, so we'll move on from that one. There's another oh, question. Well, I will just an answer in terms of, so if, if, whatever the this is, um, there are specialists and they're usually um, oral medicine specialists in tertiary referral centers. So what does that mean? It means that if you were to go and see <clears throat> your dentist or your GP and say, I've got a problem that's to do with my mouth, they should be able to refer you either to the community health service where they might have a specialist or the community health service might be able to refer you on to one of the main teaching hospitals where they have um, specialists. So for instance, um, where I work at the Eastman, um, the oral med department would be where um, dentists can refer um, people if they need to. All right. So the starting point is to go to see your dentist and ask for a referral if they can't help. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, an interesting question. Is there any way of recovering from receiving gums? So it, it, it depends on why your gums are receding and how much they've receded. So if you um, are overbrushing, one of the things that you can do is, is stop overbrushing um, because by overbrushing, by that I mean really, really going hard at your gums, you can brush your gums away. But the important thing is that you still need to brush enough to get the plaque off. Depending on how the recession is, you might be able to have some surgery, some gum surgery, which is, is, is quite um, non-invasive really. Um, the issue will be if you have an autoimmune um, disease, you might not respond so well to the surgery. Um, and it, it also might not, last very long so it depends it depends on the situation but the bottom line is they won't do any surgery unless your oral hygiene is absolutely meticulous because it will fail if you aren't keeping the plaque off so no matter what the circumstances are your oral hygiene has to be immaculate for it to to take place so it is possible thank you Ruth. i mean that gives quite a bit of optimism um, may I ask how invasive is the procedure? Um, it's, it's not particularly, I mean, it's normally done under a local anesthetic. 
So if you've had a tooth, uh, a filling, it would be sort of numbing up like that. Um, and you might have discomfort for a day or two, and you might have to be quite careful about the way you, you brush for a, a week or so. But um, it's, it's really very, very straightforward. Um, but oral hygiene is key, really key. That's the, the number one rule. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, so we've had a flurry of uh, additional questions that have come in, which is positive. Let's take a quick look. Um, someone has asked, if you have tooth loss due to decay with dry mouth and reflux, but no bone loss, are implants, are implants suitable replacements? If not, what options are there? So... It, it will depend on each individual case as to um, what is, is possible. The, um, there's, there's no reason why you can't have implants. The, the biggest risk, well, there are many risks to having implants, i.e. having an autoimmune uh, disease, um, having unstable diabetes, having poor plaque control, all of those things are risk. But there, so long as your plaque control is really good, then there's ab absolutely no reason why you can't. The, uh, the only other reason you might not be able to is if you are on bisphosphonates or something like that, um, which might be a problem. But you know, it's worth going and having a conversation with your dentist, even if they can't and, and don't wish to um, uh, put implants, they can refer you on to somebody who has a lot more knowledge about um, your specific condition. Um, the, the big issue as well is that the NHS can't necessarily cater for putting implants. It depends on what the criteria for the center is. So all of those things have to be taken into account. But there, there sh you, you should have a conversation about implants definitely and see where that takes you. Thank you, Ruth. A very interesting question has come in anonymously. Uh, it asks, uh, I think something that will apply to all of us, but is sugar from fruit as bad as normal sugar? I eat a lot of fruit. Yeah, the, the problem with sh sugar from fruit is that most fruits are actually quite acidic or bananas, for instance, which aren't quite so acidic are very high in sugar content and that and they're, they're sticky so they stick to the teeth so the they feed the bacteria quite a lot so um i would suggest that if you eat a lot of fruit what you do is uh give your mouth a little rinse either with fluoride afterwards or you can just rinse with water just to reduce the acidity that's uh, sitting on your teeth yeah Thank you, Ruth. Um, Michael has thanked you for his answer. That was to the first question, the very detailed question that came in. Uh, he then goes on to say, further to my initial question, I do use 5,000 ppm toothpaste. However, I also suffer from gum shrinkage. Yeah, so is there a question there? Um, I think he was just updating on some additional information, but he doesn't go on further. So. I guess we can move on to the next question that comes in from Helen. Helen goes on to ask, um, I do like water, but my Reynolds doesn't like the cold. I sometimes get ulcers. Right. Any suggestions? Um, I would just drink warm water then, if you can manage that. Um, yep. obviously boiling water, but I, you know, I'd, I'd warm it up a little bit and that might help, help the Raynaud's. In terms of ulcers, it's a question of trying to figure out what the trigger is for the ulcers. Quite often it will be um, uh, food related. Um, so, you know, people, some people have ulcers because they um, uh, have a reaction to tomatoes or something acidic like that or kiwi fruit or so it's, it's, it's about finding what the trigger is. It, some people would just, their immune system is, is really low and then they'll get ulcers as a result of that. So that's a little bit more difficult to um, 
uh, manage, but if it's related to food, it's finding the trigger. Yep, stopping it at source. Um, because Helen then goes on to also say, when she does unfortunately get the ulcers, it makes brushing very painful. Yeah. So I'm guessing there's no real way around that until it recovers. No. It's uh, digging in and just um, doing what, you know, what the best you can at that point. I think the thing about if you do have ulcers and they're really sore like that, if, if your oral hygiene is really, really good, really immaculate, and then you have an episode of ulcers and you can't brush quite to that standard, it means that the balance is still hopefully in favor of not being a problem, yeah? Whereas if you've got poor plaque control and then you have ulcers and you can't brush, you're already halfway to getting a problem because the plaque's so um, virulent. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all about trying to be what I call a plaque athlete. And that takes training and time and effort. And the first uh, gentleman's question, um, you know, he's obviously doing all of those things and really, really trying hard. And that therefore he's, you know, hopefully doing the best he possibly can. So when he does get an episode or something, it tips it a little bit, it's not as much as it would be. And that's what we're trying to uh, achieve. Thank you, Ruth. There's been a, a very interesting comment that's coming from Annabelle. It's not quite a question, it's more of a comment uh, as to what works for her. So I thought it would be worth sharing it with our audience and also getting your opinion. Um, she says, I suffer from limited scleroderma. I have found that taping my mouth at night using surgical tape for, for sensitive skin. A specific product called Micropore helps greatly with my dry mouth. Um, I was wondering if you had any opinion on that roof or if you'd come across uh, such a thing previously. Uh, no, but like I said, if you can um, stop the mouth breathing at night, then it will help reduce the dry mouth at, at night. And I, the other thing I would do is um, uh, use some sort of a lubricant just before you go to bed, uh, um, you know, to, to really moisten up the, um, oral cavity so that's almost like the last thing you might do before you get into bed um, and I think try a humidifier as well humidifier yeah we covered that in the presentation thank you Ruth uh, moving on to the next question uh, someone says I do see a hygienist but it is so expensive I'm retired on ill health grounds and have a limited income as I'm not entitled to benefits. What can I do alternatively? Uh, it's really tricky because, you know, if you, if you can't access the dental hygiene treatment via the NHS, um, then it, it, it's, it's tricky um, cost-wise because it is expensive. But one of the, the really important things I think is if you can access a little bit for a limited time and really get your oral hygiene up to speed, then it might be more a case of trying to just maintain it maybe on a regular sort of every six months or something like that, yeah, with a hygienist, which might be a bit more manageable financially. But I come back to this, you know, you need to become a plaque athlete um, because the, the balance is tipped um, not in your favor if you have an autoimmune disease or dry mouth or something like that, yeah. Thank you, Ruth. Um, another question has come in. Um, it says, you stated that you should brush first thing in the morning. Was this prior to or after breakfast? I guess a very important question. Yeah, so um, I would always recommend um, brushing before breakfast. And the reason for that is that fluoride works by um, uh, the, the fluoride ions um, help to protect the um, drop in pH that you get when you eat. So having fluoride ions um, available beforehand um, makes the acid attack much less and it's really the change in pH in your in your mouth that causes decay so um, brushing beforehand will help with that okay in terms of um, 
brushing uh, after you've eaten, it's worthwhile leaving your brushing to about 45 minutes after because the drop in pH from eating uh, or drinking um, means that the enamel on the surface of your teeth is softened. And when you go and brush straight away after eating, you're brushing away potentially good enamel, just microns, but you're brushing away good enamel. So what you really want is to let everything, the pH come back up to neutral, which takes about 45 minutes. Now, if you have dry mouth, your saliva isn't going to work as efficiently and it might take a bit longer. So you could use a mouthwash at that point and then go and brush to get rid of the debris. Fantastic, so that's a great key takeaway. Is that something that should be followed in general whenever you eat? Absolutely. At least 45 minutes later, you can then brush, but alternatively, you can use mouthwash straight after you eat. Or Thank before. You. Or before. Fantastic. Or before, yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, another question has come in, which relates to your presentation. It relates to uh, spit instead of rinse. Uh, they just wanted more information as to uh what that means exactly is it a case of not rinsing and just spitting is that what you meant by that so it's just a bit of clarification so the the the, the spit don't rinse um so don't just brush your teeth and then spit out and that's it okay okay so for a lot of people that will be quite difficult because they've got used to rinsing yeah now if you can't get out of the habit of rinsing then I would suggest then using a mouthwash with fluoride at that point. Yeah. Um, but to be honest, it's a waste of, of money to do that in the sense that you can just spit. If you get used to not, not rinsing mm -hmm. and you just spit, then the fluoride ions are there. So off, after you spit, you don't actually then put water in your mouth. That's what we mean by the rinsing. Yeah. And you just literally clean your brush and um, um, pop it to dry. Okay, okay. Well, thank you, Ruth. Um, another question has come in. Uh, it's an anonymous one, and it says, what about ulcers from methotrexate medication? Well, that is something that I think you need to talk to your, um, uh, your, your team about, because that will be a medication that they, so, um, either talk to your dentist or your um, scleroderma team that you work with um, to see um, what they might suggest um, for the ulcers, um, particularly if you're getting those quite a lot. Um, it's not within my area of expertise to, um, uh, to say, but you, you might try some sort of um, medication to help alleviate the ulcer um, effect. Um, one thing that you can put on um, is ginger gel. Sometimes that takes the sting out, but it doesn't all, always work for everybody. So um, that might be something that would just help. It doesn't, um, if you catch it early enough, it can just take that burning sensation out. So ginger gel, it's a, a, a gel that you can pop on, but it won't stop the, the ulcers. Thank you, thank you, Ruth. Um, an interesting question has come in. Um, it says, I need to brush my, I need to brush after eating because everything I eat sticks to my dry mouth. So I know we spoke about the 45 minutes being ideally in place, but what's your response to that, Ruth? So I would um, suggest that uh, you um, rinse with some um, fluoride rinse and then brush a little bit later as you know if you if you can um i would definitely use um, a mouth rinse before eating um uh you know a salivary um mouth uh mouthwash to help with the dry mouth and i do that literally just before i eat so that um you've got a little bit of a coating um and i'd use lots and lots of water water um to help with with the um, flushing things out as much as possible. Thank you, Ruth. 
Uh, we've had a question that's coming from Chris. Chris says, I have bone loss and have to wear a parcel denture. 12 teeth left. So the denture rubs on gum, trapping food. So I have to wash the denture often. I have a little infection uh, where the gum has been rubbed. So my, my dental costs are over 50 pounds. I go twice a year and I go to the hygienist three times a year. Uh, the dentist just said, use a poly grip on the denture. I hate the stuff because uh, I've got a dry mouth. What do you recommend? A humidifier doesn't work with my, with my mouth. Uh, and then he doesn't, goes on to, he doesn't go on to say why exactly, but he goes on to say that he, the humidifier doesn't work specifically for him. Okay, well, there are a couple of things. Um, if, it, if it's constantly rubbing, then I would go back to your dentist and see if they can um, do a little adjustment. Um, they, they, can have a, um, they have a paste that they can um, highlight um, where uh, the rubbing might be. Um, if you have a fungal infection, it might be um, uh, causing a bit of a problem as well. So it's worth just going back to your dentist and having a look. Um, the the polygrip is is good because it stops the denture from wiggling around and therefore rubbing. So so long as you don't have an area that needs adjusting, then I would advise the polygrip. I know it's it's not great, and it's really difficult balance between the dry mouth and keeping your denture stable and not rubbing. Um, always make sure that you take your denture out at night and you put it in um, uh, water um, so that uh, you, you, you give your palate or your um, gums a chance to actually um, recover from the denture sitting on it. That's really important. Um, and then just keep your mouth lubricated with um, some sort of a like bio extra or something like that. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Ruth. And, and thank you to Chris for that question. I, I hope I got it uh, completely right when I was relaying it over to Ruth. Um, we'll take one last question uh, before we wrap up. This last question is coming from Pat. Pat asks, is there any treatment for long-standing persistent oral thrush? I have had nystatin numerous times of no effect. A month ago, I had itraconazole, which is for fungal infection of the lungs. This really helped as what I thought was reflux from my stomach was awful tasting at Qatar. I'm not sure what that is exactly. Sorry if I've got that wrong, which completely went, but has now returned. The two week treatment cannot be repeated. My mouth and, and the esophagus esophagus burn all the time. Bit of a tough one, uh, Ruth. Uh, any opinion on that? Um, so thank you for that inquiry because I think you know um, fungal infections are opportunistic and um, quite often um, uh, it's because the balance in the mouth has, has, is not quite quite right for some reason. And this really affects the quality of life. Now, normally um, fungal infection or candidosis um, will um, not be painful or, um, and you won't really know about it. Um, but obviously in this case, um, this, this person does. Um, I think it's, again, speak to your um, dentist or your GP about it um, because um, you will need to have some sort of medication to help get the balance back probably. And that might be something like meconazole or there are lots of different um, medications that, that can be used, but they're not something over the counter. If nystatin isn't working, then something else. Um, and it's important to figure out what regime is going to work. And that, that really needs an oral medicine um, input um, into that. I mean, I think it's important to understand that, that because thrush is opportunistic, um, the risks are for people who wear dentures um, and it's really important that once you have got thrush, if you have a denture that you keep it meticulously clean and you might need to um, soak it in some antifungal to get rid of the hyphae that um, 
um, will attach to the denture. Um, antibiotics is another risk factor for a patient. And also um, uh, excessive, if you've been using excessive mouthwash, um, it can tip the balance and allow the bacteria to um, proliferate because you've got rid, it's almost like you've got rid of everything else. And then all of a sudden it has this great opportunity. And steroid and, um, medication is also another um, uh, uh, risk for oral thrush um, and weakened immune and diabetes, unstable, dry mouth, um, smoking. So the other things that you can try that aren't just the medication, which you need to go to your GP or, or dentist about, you can use a salt rinse. So take a big teaspoon of salt in a mug of uh, warmish water and just rinse, don't swallow any of it, but rinse that um, two or three times a day. You can use a softened toothbrush because it might be sore in the area so that you avoid scraping the lesions. And the other thing that's really key is that you will need to have a new toothbrush virtually every day until the fungal infection goes because you're cross-contaminating by using your old toothbrush. So that's a really important uh, little tip if you've got a fungal infection. And um, uh, the other thing is you can eat, um, eat unsweetened yogurt to try and help the balance um, of uh, bacteria in your mouth and um, avoid other mouthwashes and sprays until you get rid of the fungal infection or get advice from your dentist. Um, it's really challenging when it gets to the point of being really sore and it's really um, quite um, uh, life, um, not enhancing, but um, uh, detrimental. So um, I would get a referral or see your dentist as, as soon as possible would be my advice. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. We've now reached the, the end of the hour, so we'll be wrapping up. But thank you for you know, the countless golden nuggets just from that question alone. And, um, and of course, throughout the whole presentation in the Q&A, a huge thank you from myself and from everyone at SRUK and also from our audience. Many comments have come in and bits of feedback thanking yourself. So a huge thank you once again from, from everyone from SRUK and the whole community. I'd also like to quickly thank our audience uh, for making the session what it is, for putting your questions forward and uh, for your continued support and involvement. Um, if you would like to text to donate, you can hover over the chat section where uh, you can see more information about that at the top. Um, I would also like to take this opportunity to direct you to uh, our uh, oral section on our website. Uh, I will copy and paste the link onto the chat section right now. So it's uh, an area on our website that you can visit for more information uh, on oral health. So please do take a look at that section. Um, I've just added in the link there. And um, I'd also like to take this opportunity to let everyone know that we do have our virtual conference coming up in September and I will post the link for you to all uh, click onto and find out more information and hopefully sign up. So I'll get that done right now. But otherwise, I think that's uh, all bases covered. We managed to, to actually answer all of the questions. So thanks again, Ruth. Uh, we've timed it very well. But otherwise, I'd like to wish everybody a lovely rest of the day. And we're now logging off. So take good care, everyone. And take care, Ruth. Thanks once again. Thank take you so much for the opportunity. Bye. You're very welcome. It's been a pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.